Hello there my lovely jewelry makers, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make these peacock wire kumihimo earrings and these are the ones that I made so this is just using copper wire and then these color of beads I'm using hematite gemstone rounds in different colors, so silver and blue there and then faceted as well to really add some extra sparkle to the earrings, especially because they dangle nicely from the ear, especially with that drop in the middle so that sparkle really gives it an extra play. Now in the tutorial I'm going to show you how we make the braid here because we're going to add in beads along the way to achieve this kind of peacock effect and also we make a bend in it so it kind of gets a little bit of diamond shape to it as well. I'm going to show you how we add the drop and also finish off the ends so to be able to make the whole complete set of earrings basically. So I'd love to hear in the comments down below what you think of these and also what materials you maybe will put together. But if you want to learn how to make them then keep watching. So then as for the materials that we'll need, first of all here I have two different gauges of regular round copper wire. The first gauge is a 0.6mm, this is the wire I'm using to make the braids with. Then I have a 1mm, this is the wire I'm going to use to make that little loop so we can have a drop. And then we of course need a square kumuhimu disc as well because it's pretty crucial in making the braid itself. Then also to make the braid, I'm using these 3mm rounds here, they're going to get incorporated during the process of making the braid. And then the rest of the beads that I have, they're the ones I'm going to add in that little drop in the middle. And that's also 3mm rounds, then I have 6mm rounds, and then 8mm rounds. Always you can mix yours however you want to. Now the specific beads that I'm using are some faceted hematite gemstone rounds, and I have them in the blue colour, and then also in the silver. Then to finish off the braids with, I've got some 10mm ribbon ends here, and also two of them we can attach our earring fannings using the drop rings because they have those little loops. And finally here I also have some head pins because we need them to help make the drop. Now if you look in the description box below the video, you'll find the material list written out along with links as well, so they might be helpful. Otherwise, let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. And then we need to cut some lengths of wire. So what I have here is eight lengths of about 30 centimeters each and just make sure they're all nice and straightened out so we don't have any kinks in them. And then what I've done is I made sure all the ends are even there, so I put them together. Then I put some insulation tape around the ends here to hold all the wires in place and then I just bent the very ends of the wires there back on themselves to stop them from pulling through the tape. Then to attach the wires to a disc I'm going to get my disc out here and then I'm going to tape my wires and then that taped end I'm going to put down through the hole in the centre and then on the back of the disc I'm going to grab onto it with my other hand and then just hold it in place like this for now. Then we need to distribute all these long lengths of wire into the slots. So what we need to end up with is four lengths in the four middle slots on the top and then also four lengths in the four middle slots on the bottom. So I'm just going to start from one side here and starting from the left so there's no need to take one further to the right and bring it over to the left. Just start from the one side here and I'm just going to bring that to the top and then the next one I bring down in the slot that's right opposite it. So now the equivalent one on the bottom there. The next one again I bring into the next top one. So you can see I'm filling out from the left there. I'm going to end up with four slots in the middle filled out, next one to the bottom and then just keep doing this until you distribute it all of the lengths into the slots. When I then have all the wires in place here, what I'm going to keep doing throughout is I'm going to keep holding on to my braid underneath it. Right now it's just that end with the tape of the wires but as the braid keeps growing through and coming out on the back of the disc I'm going to keep holding onto the braid right below the hole in the middle there of the disc just to have the most control. But then what we need to do is start the braid structure here. So what I'm going to be using is a diagonal braid structure. So I'm just going to swap hands. And then I'm going to start from the top left. So I'm going to release that top left length of wire and then smooth it out before we move it. And then from that left side I'm going to bring it over the middle here, over towards the right and I push it down in the middle and then just bring it into the slot on that right side. So now we need to move all the bottom and the top wires there. So I take the furthest left one on the bottom to start with, because that's the one that's opposite the slot that we emptied on the top. Smooth out the wire first of all, then I bring it to the opposite side. As I'm also pushing against the middle there, kind of rolling it with my thumb, rolling motion, then into the empty slot on the top. And then swap hands again, then take the next one towards the right, and now we need to bring that down into the empty slot on the bottom that was just freed up. I use my index finger and push against it. This helps get the braid nice and tight and also smooth it out as I bring it then down into the slot. The next one towards the right, smooth out your length of wire. 
and then use your thumb to bring it up into the empty slot on the top there. Next one out to the empty slot on the bottom. And we just keep going like this, moving one wire at a time to the opposite side until we've used all of them. And just making sure to kind of maneuver the wires like I'm showing to make sure to get the braid as tight as possible right there in the middle and also as even throughout as possible. The last one, bring that up. And I also like to kind of push against the others to help tighten up the braid that way as well. Bring it to the top slot. And now the side one here needs to be brought back in. So we need to complete this round. So I release it. And then I'm gonna bring it cause we have four now on the top. So that's fine, but we only have three on the bottom. So that means this one needs to be brought to the bottom. So what I like to do is smooth it out and then kind of tug at it slightly and then press against it on the side there again to help tighten up all these wires in the middle and then bring it down into the empty slot on the bottom there. So again, we now have four on the bottom as well. And then all the wires are now back in the original setup and this is one full round. So we then need to start another round here and we just do that the exact same way, the top left one. Release that, smooth it out and then bring it over the middle there towards the right. And again, make sure that we press down in the middle when it lays on top of all the wire, other wires that are crossing from top to bottom and bottom to top. Press against it there. And then otherwise you just move the rest of the wires in the exact same way that I just showed you before. Making sure to keep it as tight as possible in the middle to make the braid nice and tight and even throughout as much as possible. So just move all of these again the exact same way. Just one at a time into the empty slot on the opposite side that was just freed up from the previous movement. Keep smoothing out the wires as well. Also warms them up and make them nice and malleable and easier to work with. And the side one, when you moved all the other ones, smooth it out and then tug at it slightly and then press against on the side there while you then bring it down. And that's now another full round. So you just keep repeating this until we have the length we need before we then get to the point we need to add in some beads as well. Now then keep braiding and then you'll start to see a braid coming out on the back of the disc here. So like I said, I'm going to keep holding onto the braid, moving up the braid as it keeps growing by keeping my fingers underneath the hole there. And also the length that we need is about four centimeters now until we now got to start adding in beads as well. So that's the point that we've got to. So first of all, I'm going to start a new round. I'm just going to start that in the exact same way. So top left one, out to the right side, make sure to push down in the middle there. And then move all the wires on the bottom and the top to the opposite side, just one at a time. Working towards the right side of the disc. You can see so far, the exact same. And it's the same braid structure we're gonna keep doing, but obviously we need to add in beads as well now. So I'm getting now to the point where I bring this down and then I have the one left on the bottom to move before I've then moved all of them. And this is actually the one that I wanna add my bead to. So I'm just gonna release it and then I smooth it out again so the bead is actually able to go onto it. And then you just wanna add the bead on the end of the wire and let it drop all the way down, right there into the middle. And then what you need to make sure of is that this bead now drops down and then gets locked in place underneath the wire that's going out to the side. So if you need to push it down a bit, you can do that. And then you start to bring this wire, making sure the bead is slotted in there to kind of that little corner and gets stuck in place. And then you can bring this wire to the top, continue the braid structure. And then again, we just release the side one and push against the other side. And that's also very important with the bead to still help try and keep the braid as tight as possible. And then now that's round, that round is complete now as well. So that's really how you add in a bead. So I'm just gonna show you again up closer so you can see exactly where that bead needs to sit. So I take my top left length of wire, smooth it out, and then I push against it there in the middle against all the other lengths that are crossing over out to the side. And then we need to move all the other lengths here from the bottom and the top. And then we just take one at a time. Again, smooth them out before we move them. And then use your thumb here when you're bringing the wire up and then use your index finger when you're bringing it down. Again, to make sure we get it as tight as possible. And it's, like I said, especially important here when we add the beads because the bead is what's gonna help then create the kind of curve in the braid because we're just adding them on the one side. But we then need to try and get the rest of it here as tight as possible to help emphasize that curve. 
Just move all of them. The last one on the top, bring that down. And then that last one on the bottom, just smooth it out first of all so we don't have a little kink where that will stop the bead from going on. So just on the end of the wire there, I add the bead and let it drop into the middle. And then this is where I make sure it then goes into that little corner, slots in there. So underneath this wire that's going out to the side, make sure to push it into that little corner and then bring the wire up into the top slot there. Then release the side wire and then make sure to push against the side of the braid there to help tighten it up again and really also help emphasize that curve and then bring that down. So that's how you then add in a bead. So you can see the exact same braid structure as we were using before, but we're just adding one bead in, in a certain place every round. So what we need to do now is do this five times so we end up with five beads in total on this side here. Once you then added in your five beads, then on the back of the disc case you start to be able to see your braid curving naturally because just adding those beads on the one side causes that. So what you also can tell is obviously the braid, the end of it here is kind of almost wanting to start hitting the back of the disc. And also, just keep holding onto the braid here, right underneath that hole. So also over this curve, however the best you can hold onto it. Something like that. Once we've now added those five beads in, what we need to do is pick back up the braid structure. So that top left one, bring it over the middle out to the right side, and then just keep moving your wires in the same way, now without adding beads in. Because now we need to make a few rounds to get to kind of the midpoint, you could say. And what we need is after the final beads, and now the first round that I'm doing after adding beads in, we need to do eight rounds in total until we get to that midpoint. So I made my eight rounds now. You can just count them as you go, or you can count them after by counting the kind of little loops on the edge of the braid there. That's also a way to count how many rounds that you've done. And then, like I said, we reached this kind of midpoint or the little point in the piece. So what we need to do now is make that point, but then be able to make the other side, because this is just one half of the earring there, and also make it as symmetrical as possible. So to do that, what we need to do, right now my disc is facing the right direction, and what I'm gonna then do before I make any more braiding is actually flip it upside down, so just like that. And then what we can just do as well is just kind of reposition our wires a bit, because the wires tend to naturally go against, or the braid rather, the back wall you could say inside the hole there so whatever you just got to reposition your wires something a bit like that and then now what we need to do is actually the exact same thing that we were just doing but we just need to be a little bit mindful of it as we're starting out here so the disc is upside down but don't kind of pay too much attention to that I'm going to take the top left length of wire just like we did before we're going to do the exact same braid structure smooth it out and then we need to bring it out to the right side and as we do that, we need to make sure that we're doing this and making the braid as tight as possible, especially right here the first couple of rounds after we do this little point. So make sure you really push that down and also you help kind of push up the braid in the middle there. And then otherwise we need to move the remaining wires in the exact same way, again, making sure it's as tight as possible because it's flipping the disc in that way that's going to create that little point in the braid. We do need to kind of help as much as you possibly can, kind of help emphasize it. Otherwise it can end up looking more of a straight braid. So you just want to move the rest of them here in the exact same way as you can see I'm doing the exact same round as the other times. We've just flipped the disc upside down. That's the only difference. I'm just making sure it all gets really nice and tight there in the middle. especially right here at the end, and then again, the one on the right side of the disc, release it, tug at it, and then push against in the middle there to help tighten it up. So we've now done that little point where you kind of say switch direction of how the disc is facing. Now what we need to do is make the same length of braid as we just did here without beads, after we add in the beads though and we need to do the same amount of rounds. So from now on, what I'm gonna do is another eight rounds until we then need to add in the beads on this half of it. Once I then made my eight rounds, I've now reached the point where we need to add in beads on this side as well. So I'm gonna start my next round in the same way, same braid structure still. 
But before we move any wires here, I've just released it and I'm smoothing it out. Because before we move the wire, we need to actually add a bead to this specific wire. So just go right to the end of it. And then I can get it on there. Add the bead and let it drop all the way down. Now what we need is for this bead to basically sit on this side of the braid now. So make sure you push it down as far as it'll go and if you need to kind of open up this wire a little bit, release a bit from the others to get that bead in there. Because then we bring over this wire still out to the right side of the disc while that bead stays on the left side of the braid you could say. And then out to the right there into the slot. And then, because we need this side of the braid to curve in the right direction to obviously be able to get the complete shape that we want, make sure it's pushed down close on top of the other wires. And then we need to move the bottom and the top ones again, the same principle. Now just make sure that first of all, this first one here comes on the inside of the bead as you're bringing it up. And otherwise move the rest. And again, make sure we then get this as tight as possible to really help emphasize that curve as well. So that bead can do its job and create the spacing on one side of the braid, which then ultimately when we do a few of them, creates the curve because we're only doing it on the one side. Move all of them here until we move that last one. And then we take the side wire again, smooth it out, tug at it, and then push against in the middle to then bring it all the way down. And then we have the wires back in the original setup. So now what you want to do is repeat that again. So just to show you, up close here, I've released that top left wire, smoothed it out, and then I add my bead to that one, let it drop all the way down. Like I said, if you need to kind of open up this wire a little bit from the others to push that bead to sit on the side of the braid, and also make sure you help it along by underneath the disc here, help pushing it in the right direction as well. So push it all into place and then bring it tight down against the others to then come out to the side slot there. And then we just need to move the remaining wires in the same way. So start with the bottom because that's why we still have four lengths. And then make sure that this goes on the inside of that bead into the empty slot on the top. And then just move the remaining ones in the same way. Like I said before, making sure that this becomes nice and tight. And then the more beads you add in here, they're gradually going to see we get more and more of a curve. So what we need now is the same amount of beads as we did on the other side, so that's five in total. So this was the second one, so after this I need to do another three. And just take this side one in. Tighten that up nicely. And then add your remaining three beads after this round. So now I kept adding in the beads here, and what you'll find as you do that is that this other half of the braid that we've already done is going to be more and more against the back of the disc and kind of be in the way. So what you're going to have to start doing is kind of gently bending it, putting a curve into it. Obviously it's going to go out of shape but don't worry too much about it, just do it gently. And basically kind of push it a little bit apart as a jump ring as you would open and close a jump ring there. And then you can just gently, the more you need it, push it a little bit more. So obviously it doesn't conflict too much with the back of the disc there. Just until you kind of get to this point. I've added all my five beads in now on this side here. Then what we need to do is just pick back up the braid structure and just make a straight braid, just like we did in the beginning there. So that's what we need to do now after these beads. So in the exact same way, make a braid. And we also need about the same length because then we have the full braid that we're going to need. And then once we've done that, we can then take it off of our disc. Now that I completed the braid here, then we just need to take it off the disc. And because it's wire that we're working with and made the braid with, we don't have to worry about the braid coming undone. So we can literally just release the wires from the slots here. Just like that. And then just kind of maneuver them out. We don't have to worry, like I said, about the braid coming undone. So we don't have to hold on to that too much. Just something like that. And then we have the braid done. Now obviously it looks a little bit out of shape right now, so all we do is just flatten the shape back out. We kind of opened it up a little bit like a jumping to make space to keep braiding because of the disc, so just keep flattening it out here. And what you also might find is that the point down 
on the bottom there, it's not too obvious. It doesn't stand out as much as we want it to, so don't worry too much about that because we can always emphasize that more. But just kind of worry about flattening this out and then just adjusting your shape because you can do that also because it's wire here. If you want to open up these curves a little bit, then you can do that or bring the lengths closer together or further apart. And also, what I like to do is kind of just have a pair of slim chain nose pliers here that fits nicely. If you need to push any wire in place or adjust the beads sitting nicely compared to each other, so something like that. And now that point down here, like I said, we then need to emphasize most likely. I can tell mine here, I want it a little bit pointier than what it actually is. So all you do to achieve that is where the point is, right there in the middle, you want to just kind of fold the two sides a little bit together there and then help push them a little bit closer and then you want to bring them back down but leaving the point a bit bent something a bit like that and already you can see it's got a bit more of a shape to it now and basically you just want to keep kind of playing around with this until you're happy with how it looks so the shape that we end up with and also how sharp you want that point to be. So that's more or less than the shape when you're happy with it. Obviously you then need to make another one like this and when you've then made that other one, I recommend that you then use the first one that you're happy with to then shape the second one after to make sure they become as symmetrical as possible. So once you've got both your braids done and the shape in place here, what we need to do is finish off the top there so we can also attach our earring findings to it and obviously start wearing them. So what we need to do is get rid of the excess above this crossover point. So I'm going to take my flush cutters or wire cutters, whatever you have, and we need to go straight across here, the crossover point. So literally put your pliers where you want to cut. Make sure you keep an eye on your shape as you're doing this, because obviously you don't want to cut anything wrong off or cut too much off. Straight across that crossover point, more or less. I'd rather cut a bit too little off because you can always trim off a bit more if you need to. So I'm just going to go straight across like this. And remove that. And then you can use what you just cut as a guide to cut the other one. So just put the back of your pliers up against it. Making sure the shape stays in place. You can always double check it before you actually make the cut. And then just cut off the excess of that end as well. And then now what we need to do basically is trim this. So we can end up adding our ribbon end. But also getting a little drop in there if you want to add that as well. So first of all, you can see this one isn't completely straight. Just need to trim a little bit more of the in, inner corner. And then what I also like to do, because what I want to make sure is to not add too much bulk inside of this ribbon end because it can get hard to clamp down then. And obviously if we have two braids laying on top of each other, that is quite bulky. So I like to also go in and cut off the inner corners of the braid. Something like that. Same on the other side. Because then that, just cut that off. like that, get rid of that them little bits of wire because then instead of overlapping they actually end up laying next to each other like that so that obviously means when we add it inside the ribbon end there's far less bulk and also we then have some space so I'm going to do a little bit more on this one to then be able to add in that little loop that we need to make if we want to add that drop obviously if you don't want to add the drop you don't need to add that loop either. That's completely up to you. But literally you just kind of take a bit of time here and trim whatever you need to trim to get them even at the top but also so they lay flat next to each other just like that. And what I also recommend that you do is that once you cut that and you're happy with how it is before going any further that you basically use that as a template to cut the other one that makes cutting the other one a little bit easier and it's also to try and make sure to get them as even as possible. So I would know, 
put them even like that, I would know that this will be my cut point and the other one. So I just recommend doing that alongside each other. But otherwise, what would they need to do as well now, if you want to add that drop in, is to cut a length of one millimeter wire here. I just have about 10 centimeters, so it doesn't have to be too much, because we literally just need to make a drop in the middle of it here. So I just get a pair of six-step bell making pliers. You can also use round nose pliers. I just know if I use these, I use the same step on both of them, I'll get the same size loop. But I just place that right in the middle of the wire. And then I basically just want to make a full circle all the way around. So again, we have the ends coming out to each their own side. But with that circle there in the middle, now what we also then just need to do is create a little bit of spacing here. So I take my flat nose and then grab onto the circle with that, just to make sure it keeps its shape. And then I need to start bringing these tails up a little bit and basically twist them around each other to more or less also secure that circle in place. So just wrap them around once or twice. And what we can do is start with ones there and then basically I want to just get my ribbon end and then I place it inside to more or less see where it's going to be coming out because if it's going to be too hidden inside of the ribbon end you might want to add another twist but like this it sticks out nicely because it doesn't have to stick out too much it's literally just so we can have that little loop or we can attach a drop to it so it doesn't have to be a full circle that sticks out just enough to catch on to so this is actually pretty good I think and now I have that little loop ready and then we just need to put it all together so I then grab my ribbon end here and then what we need to do is get some glue inside because that's going to help hold it all together so I take my glue and then I just use a toothpick here to apply it with Let's get a decent amount on here. It doesn't have to be too much because obviously whatever's excess and when we clamp it down it's just going to come spilling out. But what I want to do is then get this inside of the ribbon end, first of all. Make sure to coat the inside walls basically. And like I said, we don't have to fill it up completely because the braid is going to go inside of here, or the ends of the braid. So just a nice little coating for now. And then whatever I have left, or if you need to add some more, I like to add on the ends of the braid. Again, the part that's going to go inside the ribbon end. Because then when you adhere the two pieces together, they're going to bond together nicely. I also like to try and get some glue in between that open space. Because it is really glue that's going to hold this together. So use a nice and strong glue. It works well with the metal. So do something like that. And then I grab my ribbon in first of all, and then I take that little loop that we made and put that in first. So the loop just sticks out there in the middle of it and we have the two ends of wire going out to the sides. And I don't worry about them just yet. We're gonna deal with them later, but the most important thing now is just to get this fastened together. And then I take my braid here, where I've already added the glue as well, and also put that inside. Again, making sure that that loop then sits right there in the middle and also between those two ends of the braid. So more or less something like that. And then what we need to do, because this is still open, we need to clamp it down, but making sure everything stays in place so it can be a little bit fiddly. But just do the best that you can. Try and make sure everything stays where we want it to. So that loop stays in the middle and with an end of a braid on either side there and then just try and start to clamp this down. Now obviously there's a limit to how much you can clamp it down because it is metal that we have inside so it's not like cord where it just flattens out more but that's what the glue is then for so obviously once it dries it will help hold it all together more. So clamp it down as much as you can without it moving around and losing its shape or anything and basically what you want to do now is leave this to dry because we don't want to cut anything off now until we know it's all nice and secure.
So now let the glue dry here until nothing is moving around anymore so it's all in there nice and securely and what we need to do now is get rid of these excess wires pointing out to the sides because obviously that might be a little bit annoying when we want to wear it. So to do that all I'm going to do is get my flush cutters in this case and then I just want to go in basically slightly kind of close them up to be around the wire and then I use the side of that ribbon in there to kind of push them against to get this cut as flush to the ribbon end as possible. And then you just go in and cut it off. So you have a nice flush cut there. You shouldn't have any wire actually sticking out of the ribbon end. Same on the other side. Just like that. And if you do want to, what you can always do is take a bit more glue and just put it over the ends there of the ribbon end just to kind of close it up and seal up any little gaps that we have. But then otherwise we got rid of the excess. And now all that's left to do is if we want to add any drop here in the middle and obviously the earring finding as well. So then to make the drop here I've added my beads onto my head pin so the order that I did it in was just a 3mm round then the 8mm, the 6mm and then two 3mm rounds and I mixed the colours like this. It's just to kind of get a similar kind of shape as the actual braid itself. I just thought that would look nice but obviously you can do yours however you want to. Now what we need to do is make a wrap loop here but also attach it to the braid at the same time. So what we need to do first of all is make a loop on the head pin here. So I've pushed all the beads down as far as they'll go. Then I take my chain nose pliers and place them just a little bit above that top bead. So there's a little bit of space. And then I put a bend into it, more or less a 90 degree bend. Now I then take my six step bell making pliers here, but you can also use round nose pliers. And then you want to place them at that bend and then take the tail of it all the way around to make a full complete circle. So something a bit like that. Now before we actually make a wrap loop with this, what we need to do is attach it to the earring. Because obviously while it's open here. So what I'm going to do is bring it through that loop that we added to the ribbon end. And then just get the loop that we just made inside of it. Now it can be a little bit fiddly because obviously we're working within the middle of the braid here but just do the best you can. So that's now placed there. Now we need to fasten it so this is going to stay in place and obviously not be able to fall out. So I'm going to take my chain nose pliers again and then however you need to grab onto this whatever will work best. You can get it from one side then that's fine. So I'm grabbing onto that circle that we made and then I'm going to take this tail and then wrap it around that bare space of wire on the head pin that we left to basically fill in this space right down till it meets up with the beads so they're also kind of fastened nicely in place so they don't move around too much up and down. So I'm out of space now which means I then want to cut off the excess because so obviously otherwise that's just hanging out there. So I'm going to take my flush cutters, go in and just get in from the right angle to cut off the excess there right close to where the final wrap is and get rid of the excess and then just make sure that where you cut it off you squeeze that down with chain nose pliers, you can just get it in there so it's not sticking out slightly. Something a bit like that. And then you now have your drop added there in the middle of the braid. So all I have to do now is use a jump ring along with the earring findings and obviously attach this braid now to the earring finding. And of course repeat the same thing on the other one as well so you have a pair. So I then made both of the earrings here so I have my set and this is what they look like. So you can see this is the thinner braid ones and then I also have the other version so exact same technique basically. We're just using a few more wires while making the braid and they look like that. So you can see the difference there so it's really up to you what personal preference that you have for them. So whether you like the kind of thinner look on the braid or the chunkier look on the braid it's still the same technique. Otherwise, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching it. I would love to hear what you think of these in the comments down below, like I said. But I'll see you in the next one.